Signature Six, as you awaken in your guild hall. The day is yours in Fletcher's Roost. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, Buck. Buck will get up in the morning, early riser, and just uh, he'll head down and just he'll wait for everybody to kind of collect downstairs. Adelaide and Callum will, will join you. She's a bit of an early riser. Yep, Faraday will join you guys as well. Hey, so about last night. Yeah. Is that something that happens every night? So that person I shot on the roof is taken care of, potentially. Seemed like he was puppeteering those fellows. Was it this fella here? Looks like him. There's a mighty fine treasure for him. Could use the money. Well, if you shot him, he's wounded, so it may not be too difficult to bring him in. And I believe I know where he is, the well in the center of town. Do you think he stayed overnight? With how big Fletcher's roost is, could connect to any well in the city. But I did shoot him in the leg, so he's not moving fast, and he's leaving a trail. All right, Mr. Bounty Hunter, let's go get you a reward, and maybe stop by the lab afterwards? Yep, I have no issues with that as long as we collect that bounty. You in, Faraday? I am good with that plan. Are you good with that? T? That's what I should call you, right? Yes. All right, she's in. Beautiful. Did everybody got a rope or anything on them? You guys got traveling supplies or? Uh, no, I wasn't prepared to do any kind of work like that. All right. Callum, do you have any? And uh, he'll go to look in a bag that's no longer there, just out of habit. Um, no. I don't have much of anything. Perfect. Faraday, you got anything? I do not. Awesome. <laughs> Very little. Perfect. So I like to hear. Should probably make a, a stop on the way to Quick General Store and I'll we'll make our way out. Listen here. While I'm not against a spot of shopping, it may behoove us to just go to the well and we can use our friends like uh, Bud or Fizz or even Bean to descend into the well in the bucket just to see what kind of passage there is or where it might go. That way we're not giving him extra hours to get away. No, fair enough. I, I mean, I'm not used to working along these little guys. So yeah, let's uh, kind of go see what we got going and then we'll kind of make the decision from there. Excellent. Alrighty, but we'll go ahead and I'll I'll direct the, the folks to the well. Okay. Yeah, it's easy enough. Um, you guys travel through, uh, across one busy street, and then travel down a couple uh, narrow alleyways. You can see the signs of someone jumping from roof to roof. There's a few shingles that have fallen down. There's some dried blood in between two buildings. And then a whole bunch of it that looks like when this person landed, they probably cut their leg even worse and some blood dripped down. So it's, it's borderline unbelievable that they made the jump in the state they were in but you can see a clear trail of blood that gets worse and worse over to the side of a well where there's a handprint, and then they drop down. Looks like you got him pretty good. Damn right. Is this how you normally earn your coin? No. I run my own ranch, but I did used to be sheriff and earn some money doing that. That's fascinating. Yeah, it was good for a time. Are we ready to roll? Ready as I'll ever be. All right. I'll uh, unsling my rifle, and I'll point it at the ground. And uh, I'll shift the lever to send out sticks. Okay. <laughs> and you guys are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then sticks just <laughs> pops out a little portal, holding a little stick. Nice. All right, dude. This is what we're going to do. You're going to probably travel alongside these guys' as friends. And then just whatever direction you can go, you got that little undead sense of yours. Whatever you did last night, just kind of keep that up. Got it? Very expressive. While you're saying that, Adelaide is touching your rifle, investigating the rift focus on it. <laughs> she's always she's interested in rift focuses and how they manifest differently. So, And she's uh, a little socially ignorant, so she probably wouldn't be aware that it's highly inappropriate to... <laughs> to never, just, never, touch touch gun. <laughs> never touch a man's gun. Never touch a man's gun. Just like Not full on investigating yeah. it. Yeah. Do you actually try to, like, pull it off of, like, his back? Not off, but oh, she's, okay. like, lifting it, like, looking <laughs> at like, it. Did you make this? In a way. That's a beautiful craftsmanship. That they are. Sticks, you good? Okay. Sticks is going to jump into the bucket. Uh, Yeah, and she's going to... Adelaide's going to spin open. It's a book. It's a journal. But on the front is the crest of the Mackenzie family. And that's her rift Ooh, focus. Okay. As Bean comes out. Bean! He's a very small looking little roadrunner guy. He's got a rainbow tail, but he has a prosthetic leg. He's got a fake leg. 
And then Fairdale let out Psy or Bud um, by putting out his right arm like this, and then the clothes the the wraps start to unravel, and then Psy pops out. Adelaide's in awe at that. Um, and then I'll take out. I was gonna have a flute, but I think I'm gonna stick with the tarot deck. Um, I'm gonna take it out and then flick really fast enough cards that it can make like a circle and then little fizz will pop out of the center. I dig it. So you flip like all the major arcana out and then Yeah. And they pop cool. they float and then he pops out. That's middle. awesome. Uh, as I'm lowering kind of like sticks down by like I'm assuming which is like the lever system or whatever. There's a little like yeah. prank. <laughs> Cal I got this. <laughs> <laughs> he's one, one, Bam. One he's like, don't worry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell him three taps. We're able to fit down there and able to get through just fine. Two taps might be a little tight. This this is not. I my guess would be that this is not your usual well. What do you mean? If a man jumped in the well, well yeah, and didn't come back out. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I was telling Fair to. Oh, you weren't here for the conversation. These things all connect throughout the town at some degree. The wells? They have to. I mean, if that's how they got their water. And, I mean, these things aren't used anymore. Whether or not we can fit. I, he could have crawled throughout this whole tunnel. I don't know. I didn't jump down last night. All right, and we've sent them down, correct? The uh, I'm, I'm really yeah, yeah, down as I'm having this conversation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It I, doesn't take too long. Yeah. But yeah. Fizz is just crawling along the side. Like, he's light enough. You just... Sure. Like, a little light on the side. Yeah. Between Fizz's anatomy and how small he is, he could just... Yeah. Climb down. Um, like obviously, Bud can fly. just hover and Bean uh, can fall with style if you choose. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're lowering ah. down <laughs> sticks and what did Bud go as well? Yeah, Bud's and Bud and and Fizz is climbing down and Adelaide's just kind of uh, uh, petting his feathers. She's like, "All right, Bean, you go and you show them that you have the fastest bird that ever lived." And he will run down Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick little bugger, run on down. I'm He's a speedster. Gonna climb on the side and sit, looking down. As uh, as we lower down, we're gonna shift our perspectives to those of Sticks, Bud, Bean, and Fizz. As the four of you, through your various means, get lowered down, or hover down, or sprint, or just pitter patter down, um, sticks, you'll arrive in your bucket transport, just onto some pretty dry dirt at the bottom of this well, um, and you see there is a pretty big, obvious, like metal sheet that is just propped against the stone wall of this well, and there's a bloody handprint on the side of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh Looking at the tunnel, like, is it, like, human size, like, standing, or is it, like... If you were to use your stick method, it's about one and a half sticks tall. I like it. Okay. So you... Buck could fit, but I'd right. but you're going to be doing this regardless of... Oh, your army crawling? And anyone larger than you as sticks, you're going to be crawling. Okay. It's, it's going to be a tight squeeze no matter what you do. And there is blood all along the ground in there. Fizz will go through. Okay. <laughs> Fizz. Um, yeah, On high you, alert. As you creep your way under the, the metal sheet. Um, it's not to say that Sticks couldn't move the metal sheet, but it is like two or three times wider than Sticks is. It's like a big... It imagine it's like it's sheet metal. It's just got a big minus two to might. I don't think he could move it. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like he can prop it open with the stick a little bit, wide enough for Fizz to crawl inside and kind of right. glow. Um, and you see it's just, it's been bored through. This is not a hole that was made intentionally by, like, the city. This looks like oh, somebody came I down see. here and, like, chipped a crawl space over the course of some amount of time. Because the dirt down here is pretty tightly packed. It doesn't look like it's going to collapse anytime soon. Okay. But it's definitely not well constructed. Right. No pun intended. You're in a well. Um, but nothing else is around. It's just a tunnel. It keeps going. So far, it's just a tunnel. Depends how far you, you want to go. But that's like if you just, just go in through the metal sheet. Just a you little further. A little bit, keep going, and it keeps going, but it starts to is there blood open still? Out quick. Oh, blood yeah. stains all around? Okay. Oh, there's the entire bit of the ground is just dried blood. Okay. Um, this dude got shot like right next to one of the most major arteries <laughs> in the body. Let's go like 10 feet in. Okay. Being very quiet. 
Um, okay, go ahead and roll stealth in case it matters. Okay. Um, but while you do that, as you kind of tick tick your way in, um, and that, that hole starts to widen and widen and widen, um, you get to a spot where you can see it's just a big open chamber, but it's still dark in here. And so far, there's no sign of anyone still being in here, but that blood trail does continue into this into the big open chamber. Room. Okay. All right. Um, well, I got eight on the stealth. Eight on stealth? Yeah. That kind of makes sense, because you are glowing. Yeah. You're you're quiet. Right. But you're like a little flashlight. Yeah. Okay. So, finding that it goes to a room, and it, it, it that's it. There was no other, like, So side far, like, as far as you can see with your passages. little glow, you're seeing, like, this far in front of you. Okay. Maybe about two, three feet. Um, it does open up, and you can see there are, like, shapes in the darkness that aren't moving. So, clearly, there's some kind of structure or room. Um, depends how much further in you want to go or if you want to wait for your pals. No, but I meant on the way to that. Where yeah, it on opens the way up, in, it's just a little just tunnel. tunnel. Okay. Tunnel goes in probably about eight feet. Okay. And it opens up into this room. Okay. I'm going to head back then. Okay. And then uh, let them know. It sounds like they're okay down there. And I'm just going to drop down. Just jump. Adelaide will run up. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buck's like, wait. <laughs> and he's going to just try to grab the scruff. T, as you slide down. You get a faint whiff of cinnamon in the well itself. Um, and as you're going, you feel a little bit lighter, about three feet before the ground. And then you make contact and everything's fine. It's fine. You don't need to use the rope, but if you want to. We don't need to use the rope? What do you know that we don't? There's uh, magic. Whoever set this up, which I'm assuming is the man that jumped down here, put this in place. Yeah, I don't want to break my legs. And Callum goes, but she's a witch. And he jumps in. Callum, you start to plummet and your heart sinks and you go, and then when you get to about three feet above the ground, you slow down. It's as though, like, it's kind of as though there's a huge gust of wind or something or just force that cancels out most of your momentum and then lowers you to the ground that last little bit. I'm waiting to hear the sound of breaking legs. I'm going to wryly smile at Callum. Be like, this is a cool trick. I should learn this. Yeah, that's that was uh, unexpected, but that's why we should trust you. I appreciate that. Adelaide's pacing a little bit up up top. Are you guys coming? Happened? I can I believe that happened. All right, young one, you're next. You go. I'll go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And Faraday just hops up. I didn't even need the magic anyways, and he floats slowly down yeah. with his ability nice. of despair. <laughs> I'll, have a, I'll say, Faraday, you're kind of like leaping down just acrobatically, and Buck, you're just getting annoyed at this point. This kid just like flings himself off. Callum just leapt into the well. You're like, these kids are going to shatter their ankles someday. Yeah. But so far, Faraday just kind of leaps his way down there. He already seems to just be falling like a feather. And then towards the end of his jump, he just slightly slows down. For Callum and T down there, he doesn't slow down nearly as dramatically as Callum did. Uh, as Faraday descends, Adelaide's just kind of pacing up top. All right, there were zombies last night. People are floating down the wells. One, two, three, go! You <laughs> jump go. Yeah. Okay. As you as you jump down, same deal. You start to accelerate. You and then about three feet in, you land safely. There's a big burst of energy beneath you, and your momentum almost seems to cancel. Uh, while we wait for Buck, I immediately take out some tools and start trying to like measure the well and see if there's something in the dirt. Like what? <laughs> Get a soil sample. How did that happen? <laughs> this is this is European limestone. <laughs> it captures <laughs> spiritual energy. <laughs> uh, before Buck jumps in, he's going to do a cursory glance around, making sure there's no wandering eyes or somebody who's like purposely like watching us do all this. Um, there is someone kind of like sweeping a porch, just staring at everybody jumping in this well, and then just shakes their head, goes back to sweeping. All right. Uh, yeah, Buck is a much more logical person than just jumping wholeheartedly in. He'll he'll lower himself down though. Okay. Climb it down that rope. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you make it safely. Yeah. You notice no kind of like gravitational forces. It just gets a little easier when you get to the bottom, but it might just be that you're almost there. You're like, yeah. okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, I'm <laughs> down. Like, you guys are ridiculous. Yeah. I think Adelaide's internalizing all these weird happenings to, like, 
there's been some kind of event that is changing things like the lab disappeared and there's zombies attacking the guild and now you can land with no injury down a well like something has shifted because in her head it might be a discovery that could make her famous i'm gonna uh, turn to you as you're kind of like sweeping around and be like i don't know the specifics of your instruments but i doubt you'll find anything with them well sometimes the absence of evidence is evidence itself can i just look at the walls yeah you want to look at the walls give me uh arcane or intuition it's a pretty basic enchantment. Okay. Uh, it is genuinely momentum cancellation. Okay. So the faster you fall into this well, the more you slow down. And how is 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 it evident anywhere? Like how this how you do this? Uh, there is a magical glyph, and you're kind of like scanning around, and you just go, <laughs> and there's a brick <laughs> that's a little bit loose, and you pull it out and spin it around, and you can see there is an arcane sigil carved in here. For momentum cancellation. Oh, that's incredible. We'll have to remember that. I'm going to take the brick. All right. So, yeah, you now have a brick with the enchantment of momentum cancellation. All right. We're done playing with witchcraft, right? We're good? Well, I, uh, truly, I think we're just starting to okay, play Okay. Let's just get going <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, Sticks will point Buck over to the where the sheet is. And then I'm assuming I see the same thing that he did, the blood dragging. Mm -hmm. in blood dragging, and then it just gets very dark very quick. Okay. Yeah, I'll move the metal sheet and I'll... Does it open up to where we can stand or does it stay that... Uh, when you get to that chamber, mm -hmm. yes, you can stand. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. But yeah, you're pretty much going to be going one at a time through here. So after you. I'll go in after you if you want. Right. I mean, I can go first. Where's Faraday? Where's our big boy at? I can go first. Are you sure? I feel confident. Damn right you do. Buckle kind of just... <laughs> I'll, I will follow... Bandage Faraday. Yeah, and I'll kind of I'll have sticks kind of lead in the front. I'm assuming next to Bud, who's next to you, and then that way I'm still within, so I can keep everybody on the path and make sure we're following the correct blood trail. Yeah, as we as we crawl through this little this little nasty tunnel, um, whoever goes first and then second, you get the brunt of like the blood dirt. It's mostly dry, but it's gonna be a little gross. Um, anybody that's coming after you, you're getting kind of like some fresher soil that's been kind of kicked up and stuff. You'll still be a little nasty, but it's not nearly as bad. Uh, it's it's a, it's a unique experience for the lot of you to see Faraday just navigate through any weird space. He just like glided into this well and then he just, just sails in like he's in zero gravity or something. He just hovers through. I'm starting to embrace it. Yeah. Between the witch and the floating mummy. <laughs> 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 this is what I've had to do since day one. Yeah, He's a mummy ghost. <laughs> or a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Here. <laughs> I'm here for yeah. it. <laughs> Things are getting crazy. Um, but yeah, it's all for, the, for the sake of it, you all make your way to this larger, still pretty dark chamber. Um, you've got the torchlight, though. The chamber is not particularly large, but at first blush, you see a desk a like bed cot set up over in the corner where there's a lot of blood and there's another table that's got a few like little potion bottles and things on there but no obvious other exit is there any um like like it looks like somebody tried to fix themselves up like that, bandages that bed is covered in blood and there are like scraps of cloth okay everywhere where it looks like they were just trying to do something. Okay. Well, it looks like he's started the recovery process, but you don't recover from something like that overnight. No. All right. I'm just going to start looking around at the... Uh, I'll look at the bed um, and see if there's any sort of like scuff marks or trail that would lead off into like another direction. To quote Adelaide, sometimes the absence of evidence is evidence of itself. There are no signs that anybody left this room. Are they still here, or they found a way to make themselves not here anymore? Similar to how you found that, like, brick with the glyph on it. I don't know if there's one that makes you just bamf from one spot to another, maybe. You know, or maybe... Talking like a portal? I guess. I don't know. I'm not too familiar with that kind of stuff, or whatever can just, like, be here and then not be here. Not, like, in, like making yourself, like, not seen, but, like... Are, there is, could be. Is there anything like hanging 
like a tapestry or like even a picture, anything that's like on the, the walls of this that could be concealing a passage or a spot to hide. <laughs> like, like Shawshank or them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there a poster a of Marilyn minute. Monroe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Um, no, the walls are all just like excavated dirt. There's nothing kind of hanging. The only other thing would be the, the table or the desk. Uh, but yeah, there's no signs that anybody left. And if they did, they could have just left out the well entry. Um, this is dumb considering we've just erased that path, but when they were coming in, the blood and drag marks were all going that way, or were some going out? Did we miss the, like, our opportunity to tell that? At this point, it's it could be either. You said there was a, a desk? Yes. Is it just like a full desk? Are there drawers? It is a... A desk is a weird word for it, I guess. But there's like a chair and a writing space, and uh -huh. there's some parchment with like some incoherent scribblings on it. Incoherent, like it's poorly written, or I don't understand it. A little bit of both. Um, there's some blood on the pages, so it looks like they were writing quickly and under duress, and also bleeding. Uh, I'll pick those up and take it to both T and Faraday, as ones who have seen script that we have not been able to read. Does this language look familiar to you? I know it's not very clearly written, but looking at the blood and the quality of the writing, it might have been the person that was injured. You recognize some of the scrawlings, the intent. They were trying to do some degree of summoning. Okay. But gave up about halfway through. Okay. There's portions of a name that rings sort of a bell, but it could go a couple different ways. You're not really keen on like locking in one name or another. No, when you say name, like what there they're trying a, to summon? Yes, okay. there is a proper name that has been started. Okay. And then they gave up and they scrawled through it as if they either got the better of their senses halfway through or they thought they didn't have enough time. Okay. But through the kind of hashed out cross marks and the blood and the smearing where it looks like they tried to undo what they were doing, you're able to pick up a couple different things. Someone was trying to summon something, and it had a religious connotation to it, which is a dangerous game to be playing. Question. We're standing up in this room, correct? Mm -hmm. How from floor to ceiling, a approximate to height? Buck, you're probably doing this. To help you out for scaling, the guy that you shot was probably 5'8". Okay. Pretty scrawny. Um, so they'd have no problem being in here. They're, they're, this room is built for someone about that height. Okay. Um, so, Buck, you're probably doing a little craning of the neck, maybe a little old stupid. There's nothing else furniture-wise other than a chair and a writing space, and even this is what made out of rock. The the chair itself is like a rickety little stool kind of deal. Okay. Um, and then the the table that has a bunch of like kind of glass bottles and stuff on it looks like somebody was trying to recreate something and never succeeded, or if they did, they took it with them. But Adelaide Adelaide would recognize the site of like chemistry in progress but nothing's reacting anymore is there anything in the bottles anymore only in two uh one looks to be some kind of alcohol solution for purifying something um which is splashed all over and there's blood nearby so you gather they probably tried to disinfect their wound um and there's some spillage of some red and some green liquid um but as far as what it would be, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. It looks almost like food coloring in water, just at a glance. What did this Patterson look like? Stupid. He was like covered up, right? <laughs> um, no, not necessarily. Just hooded. Hooded. Um, yes, they it had a Faraday. they had a mask on most of their face. Um, but you, the thing that stood out was the two very, very distinct green eyes. Um, not like Faraday green eyes, yeah. but like actual fire. Like they. They crackled and produced light. If kind of looked like Faraday if he had some like magical fiery green eyes, but he had like more mask and not bandages. Hooded, couldn't really make out any crazy distinct features. Does that sound familiar to either of you? The green fire eyes that is. Yes. Would a person of that skill be able to heal themselves quickly if they were able to get in here? I mean, it looks like they tried. 
I don't think they were successful. I mean, if we wanted to play the waiting game down here, we could, but they could, they probably know that I followed, so they probably won't come back. Um, looking over the desk and stuff like that, does it look like things were taken? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the scattered mess on the table that has the glass beakers and stuff tells you that somebody came in here, obviously having just been shot, um, and without a lot of tools, extracted a bullet from their leg. Do I see my bullet on the thing? Up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, more accurately, they would have taken it from the thing you shot through him into. Yeah. But, yes, so he would have so removed he did, he that did bullet get it out. from the riftkin, yes. Yeah, should okay. someone get up to the top of the well again and see if there's another trail of blood that goes in another direction? That's where I was thinking. I'll be out. Well, I'll be up topside if you guys need to be down here longer, but trail kind of goes cold here until we find something else. I'm just going to keep looking around for a little bit. I just figure there's others that can go up and down easier than I can. Yeah, definitely definitely glad we grabbed the mummy. And uh, yeah, I'll after, uh, I'm will i assuming you're at the top with me now. Are you jumping back down? I'll just stay up there with you. Unless anybody else needs help up, which I'm sure they will. I'll just, to sake of brevity, I'll bring sticks into the gun, release them back up top, so that way we don't have to do this whole back and forth thing. And then... I'm looking. I'm looking for tracks. Looking for blood marks. Looking for any sort of scuffed like gravel. There's a lot of very, very clear signs of somebody going down into the well. Mm -hmm. There are no very clear signs of anybody coming back up, other than the two of you so far. Okay. Is that person still out there sweeping? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go up to him. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Got a question for you. Hey. Have you, besides our weirdly motley band crew jumping into that well, in and out? Have you seen anybody else? Fiery green eyes, hood maybe, kind of bandaged broken leg, coming in and out? Just you? Is everything, you alright? Hey. Well, you kind of have a hard time making eye contact with me. You just crawled out of a well. Oh yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, didn't you see all this dang blood that came pouring into this thing? It's a lot. Hey, I keep my head down. Why? Not looking for trouble. Well, I'm not asking for you to if start blood, any trouble. If a bloody man jumps in the well, and you come out of the well, That's I've fair. got no interest in that. That's good. I'm just asking, and I'll kind of I'll put some gold in my hand and like, I mean, I'm willing to pay if you saw anybody else come out besides us. I don't want no more painted gold. No goods come of that. Tell me more about this painted gold, because this is normal gold. As you can see here. Ever since your friend came by and paid with that, it's been nothing but trouble. You take it back now. Yeah, no worries. Uh, did you did you happen to go somewhere? I'm trying Picks to around in some pockets and just throws like three gold pieces at you, painted bright green, and they just kind of scatter on the ground in front of you. Take it. It's not worth it. All right. Not worth the money. All right. Calm down. It's all right. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just trying to look for the fellow that gave you this breathe we're okay we're good for your troubles and i'll hand her the are they i want no money are you sure i don't want your money it's normal gold it brings nothing but trouble okay what what did they do what's what's this trouble i, I want to make people sure people like fixed. you coming around climbing in a well it's kind of odd making noise all hours of the night they think it's faraday you think it's him green eyes bandage it wasn't me I we're, mean, we're the other person was a lot shorter than, I think, the two of us. That so doesn't not matter. Them. Okay. Take All your right. money and go. All right, we're not going to hurt you. Feel free to be on your day. If you know what's good for you, throw those coins in the well and leave them there. I never learned anyways. And I'll, pick, I'll scoop up the three and I'll have a look at it. Yeah. They have a very bright green paint all over them. That seems to kind of shimmer and shift in the light. It's almost like it's liquid. But it's all dry. You might want to go grab uh, T and, and them. Because this is... I don't even know what the hell to start with this thing, so... I'll be right back. All right, thanks, buddy. Uh, while they're doing that, I just want to... I just want to, like, fine-tooth comb Ronald McDonald this uh, bottom of the well, yeah. I want to go all the way around, touching the wall the whole time, 
just to make sure that it's not like an illusion and I fall through at some point. Um, There's no magic in here. Well, I'm not in character yet, <laughs> so let me live out my... <laughs> uh, but just like any possible space that could be hidden or like someone could hide but it doesn't seem like there's anything i'm just gonna touch all the surfaces i'll help you but i will turn to you and be like there is no magic in here but i'm gonna i'm helping you like physically just search like normally adelaide as you're walking on the far side of this chamber in between the bed and the desk uh -huh. um, your hand kind of crosses over some of this dirt on the wall and reveals another set of bricks as your hand passes through there's kind of this wispy smoke in the air just kind of falls away and you see a brick archway well it may not be magic but that it was something else and that sand, as realistic as it looks, as you kind of push it away and that smoke wisps out, just falls down and it's just a tarp. After you. Well, do you want to tell the others or we should go by ourselves? Well, I arrive and I say, I think we may have found something. <laughs> or should I bring Buck down here or do you guys want to go up there? What did you find up there? Yeah. We talked to uh, the uh, person that was sweeping up Hi. top and they gave us three uh Green, green painted coins that came from this man that was down here. Well, if there's any clues on that, or maybe we can look at him. Down here. Yeah. Down here. All right. I'll be right back. They they the well think spirit. they found a something down there that may need both of us. <sighs> All right. Yeah. I must have, must have missed something. All right. Yeah. That, that's fine. Listen, witch. Do you know how it's to? It's T. Oh. <laughs> Is that how do you spell that? T. Just the letter T? Is mm. that short for something? No. No? All right, listen, T. Mm. Do you know how to float like Faraday does? No, not like that. Is that magic? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe related. That is fascinating. It's not how I do it. It's... Not how you do your magic? Yeah. If it is magic, it's magic that I don't know. All right. And I come floating in, carried on. <laughs> <laughs> I have arrived. We're, we're back. <laughs> he floats you through the crawl space together. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, spinning this slowly. This is really <laughs> unnecessary. No, no, I insist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you reconvene in this room, uh, the two of you now see an archway in the wall. That was covered by a sandy tarp. Da 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 da. Um, yeah. And the three of you would see three green painted coins. Does it look familiar to anybody? Anybody seen these? That's what the the green eyed man paid with. Is that liquid magic? Or is yes. it like a tinge that we can wash off and just use? I'm going to smell it. Yeah, I'll just give them to you. I don't <laughs> want any of this hoodoo voodoo weirdo stuff. It smells like magic would, but it gives you a distinctly unnerving feeling. Does it seem like, like I don't know if like T would think about this, but like cursed in some sort of way, or like to where but it's why kind would of you like a bad luck yeah, sort of deal? The, th why would you do that to money? You know? Because you can give it to multiple people and then have that effect traverse across multiple things. Or like, unless you're tracking it. See? Like, what's, you know what I'm trying to think yeah. of the purposes. So they know where we are. Should we throw it away? Well, I don't know yet. It's it's similar. It's, uh, I don't know, like I said, why somebody would do it. But this is, yes, magic. Well, how about leave them here? So if they do know that where they are, they think we're just in this room and not found the secret one. I can set up my stuff and try to remove it if it's just... A substance. Let's just leave it here for now, because it's not going to do us any good, and we know where it's at. Okay. Pop it on the desk. Okay. Leave the three gold coins on the desk. As you head into the uh, chamber that was formerly blocked by the sand-looking tarp, we head on down, and it doesn't take long for this space to open up into actual cobbled stone sewers. This is what you would expect to find now at the base of a well. Uh, so it seems as though this well either hadn't been connected yet 
or just wasn't being serviced by any sort of night soil men, any sort of um, sort of maintenance upkeep of any kind. Um, but now these sewers do in fact open up and they follow any of the road lines in Fletcher's Roost. So if you knew, if you know the city really well, this is a traffic free way to get around. But it's also where they keep the night soil men during the day to keep them off the streets. There are many night soil men that have pieces missing that have been harvested for transplants. They take anything that's useful and as long as the body will go, they'll use it. But part of that means they're very stinky and they're very unpleasant to look at. So as you open up into this big sewer space, you see probably about two dozen of these guys just standing, like heads cocked, looking down, and you get the awful stench of just sewage flowing through. But this is how they get to their positions. They all seem to just be waiting above any kind of manhole exit, and they just sit there, and they wait. How many different sort of pathways are there where we're currently oh, at? Like yeah. All through those streets. Yeah, yeah, where you guys are at, you are... If I track the blood, track we the go blood. Here. Yeah, so you guys are currently <laughs> yeah. below the, you're right below the strings at the moment. So that's, if you were to go, you know, a couple, a couple rows of sewers down, you would be below your guild hall, effectively. Okay. So you're not too far from there, um, but you are right next to Reveler's Row, which is a massive stretch of buildings. So there are about a dozen sewer entrances and exits along just the path that you're in, and that is one little block, one little boulevard of Fletcher's Roost. Alrighty. Yeah, Buck's just gonna, he's looking around for tracks, blood trails, whatever, to get at least some sort of beat on anything. I know there's a lot here. Yeah, despite how awful it is down here, and there is viscera everywhere, because this is also just where some night soil men just get disposed of. They'll climb down here, and in between their shifts, they just collapse and fall into the sewers. So there's a lot of, like, it's awful down here. It is truly horrible. Through all of that, all of that viscera, all of that blood, there are a few fresh, er, kind of like brown blood stains that haven't gone, like, black and really nasty and haven't been sitting out for a while. And they head south. Because it seems like this person managed to patch themselves up relatively well. They staunched the bleeding somehow. Uh, but being on their feet so soon after being shot in the leg, You're it's gonna still gonna open have, again. Yeah, yeah. So you can see a few like bloody like boot prints every probably ten fifteen feet or so, in between just like all this mess. And you've got the night soul men kind of like sloshing around through any of the tracks, be like M move, and they go. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I'm pointing Faraday in the right direction, being like, uh, you know, I got the bead, you got the muscle. <laughs> and Faraday's going. Don't touch me, <laughs> don't touch me, touch nothing, don't touch me. I don't want to get gross. Yeah. <laughs> the I don't want to change my bandages, don't touch me. Because I'm just like grabbing me. them and just... <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> yeah, the night soul men, for lack of a better word, are sort of programmed to get out of people's way. So if they see you coming, even if you're down here, whether or not you're authorized anything else, they just know to turn away from you and face a wall and get as close to it as they can. Oh, wow, how nice of them. Yeah. It's kind of That's how they're supposed to function. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. that would be the thing that Buck's familiar with, right? Yep. Okay. Any of you that have seen the Night Soil Men, this is what you would expect. Okay. Even if you're out after dark and you see the Night Soil Men, they are, they are intended to see someone in the road, either cross the street and make themselves as non-threatening as possible, or to literally just stand still until they are clear. While we make our way through, Callum would like to just scan any way he can look to mm -hmm. see if he recognizes any faces or more specifically can see that squires anywhere down here just in case okay perhaps thankfully no um because that would mean that you would have been associated with some less than savory individuals um but all of these faces down here seem to be very gaunt very sallow um it seems like this batch didn't go out last night so they're all just kind of sitting there getting more and more ragged Keep on keeping on. You guys good? You guys staying on our trail? Yes. All right. Both Adelaide and Callum are sunk cost fallacy right now. They're not going to turn around having gone through all this. At this I don't want to walk through the sewers past all the zombies alone. <laughs> and then get all yeah, the, like most of the way there maybe and be like, you know what? I'm going to turn around and yeah. undo all that for no reward. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, the blood trail continues. Uh, about a about a twenty nine, I won't bog you down with like oh, you're gonna have to roll again. <laughs> um, you're able to keep track of it. Um, you pass probably three or four dozen night soil men on this path. They usually just stand in groups of like two or three. You're not really sure if they're like huddling together for any reason Ooh. or if they're just like we're waiting by the nearest door. What's up, dude? Uh, I want to look and see if any of them have a. Uh the control rune that we saw when they attacked. Um, you do, but it looks different than it did last night. On all of them? Like, all of them have it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Every single every single one will have one, and a ghoul collar will have a matching one. So if you're if you're the ghoul collar for a set of night soil men, like a their glyph will match yours. Okay. In the same way that um, the brick matches a specific caster from... Who knows when? So everything is like unique to the caster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way in which you bring about magic will have your own stamp on it, no matter who you are. Did in the same way that your focuses are all different. Yeah. Did, did anyone get a good look at the glyph that was in the ones that attacked us last night? Because if we can spot him here, we might be able to weaken his force, so to speak. I mean, I would, right? Because I, I had to move the body, mm -hmm. essentially. So. Um, yes, you and Carol would have gotten a pretty good look. Because Carol was the closest yeah, to... Yeah. Carol! <laughs> Carol be here! And he's, and he's up there. He's like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Taking notes. He's just reading the paper. Oh, wow. The, the two of you would pick up pretty quick. They gunned down most of the problematic Night Soil men, and the rest, when you shot him, dropped. Ah, uh, okay. Because um, that is a thing that they have to focus on. It does take energy. Are we getting any closer, Mr. Winchester? Um, it looks like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're getting close. It just depends how far you want to follow the blood trail, but it keeps going. We're going. Yeah, I'm this gonna... dude covered some ground. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. I mean, I need him for the money, so he's at the end of this trail. Yeah. Um, I'll say you guys walk for probably about 90 minutes down here. It's getting real, it's real stinky. Um, you still see that blood trail? The footprints are getting a little bit more obvious at times, and then it looks like they stop for a while, tend to themselves, and then keep going, and the trail gets a little bit light again. But you're able to follow them all the way through the coins, all the way to the spires. And then there's a spot where two night soil men have been dismembered, and there's a slight bit of blood on the like every other rung of a ladder headed back up into the streets. All right. So I know we're in the spires kind of area. Um, kind of hard to say exactly where. I don't think I've ever been this far south within this particular section, but we can always head up and then see kind of where that trail leads from there. It's going to probably be a whole nother trail. But my best guess is we're in uh, a crypt mausoleum sort of entrance, so get ready for just about anything when you poke your head up. Okay. Callum's halfway up already. I don't want to be in here anymore. <laughs> Neither do I. Faraday, follow the little one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Although this is a nifty way to travel. All right. So, Callum, you're going up first? Uh-huh. Okay. Callum, as you get to the top, um, the manhole covers in Flatcher's Roost are designed to be opened by the undead. They're not necessarily heavy. They are a crank system. So perfect. Similar. You're I'm very, very familiar, familiar with levers. Yeah. Um, it is a I'm thing. I'm the man for the job. Yeah. You kind of just crank it like this, yeah. and there's a <laughs> like action. I know that levers. Will lift. Yeah. Um, and as you do, there's instantly just a breath of fresh air just washes over. You're like, oh, oh thank God. And then there's a very strong smell of like incense, um, like things being burned. It smells a little bit like oil is a weird term for it. Not like motor oil. Or like petroleum or anything. Or like gas. Like diffuser oils. But yeah. It smells just like oils. I Essential would oils. Pay Thank gold you. for a shower. Yeah. As you as you pop up, you are in the middle of an avenue. You know that much. Based on the direction that you're facing. That just kinda clicks for you. You're like, oh we're on an avenue. But wait what? Anyways. You kind of emerge through there as a carriage is like kind of moving over your head so you're like Whoosh. nice you kind of like lean up out of there and then Cal just grabs the bottom of the <laughs> <laughs> see ya <laughs> he just I'm dips out. <laughs> I'm out <laughs> <laughs> bye 
<laughs> There's yeah. levers to be pulled. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. This you is my journey. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find out who I am. I, who am I? <laughs> As God. you emerge out of there, once that carriage passes by, there's a hefty amount of foot traffic. You turn a couple heads, but otherwise everybody's like, oh, that's weird. Someone just came out of the sewers. I guess that's I guess that's a thing. People, especially up here, would know Callum wouldn't necessarily make it click, but as everybody else kind of starts to join you up here, people know that there are individuals that go through the sewers. They work with the night soil men. Yeah. They just never see them, so they just go, oh, I guess that's what they look like. Callum will ask the general public loudly, has anyone seen a blood mummy come through here? <laughs> Buck, as soon as he hears that, Buck's like, dude, come on. <laughs> they, they, Pull it back down. <laughs> they all just kind of look curiously, and then they go, are you, are you okay? How long... How long were you down there? Uh, a blood at least, mummy? At least two hours. I would love a shower. Oh, yeah, we're tracking a... a blood mummy. Are we? There's up now? a bathhouse right down the road. Excellent. Is that where the blood mummy went? I have no idea what a blood mummy is. But there's a bathhouse over there. You should Excellent. totally go. So you've seen nothing else come out of this... Just, just you as Buck <laughs> emerges from there and a cowboy. Yes. <laughs> Alright. Well, I don't know who else is coming out next, but <laughs> Fair uh, the actual uh, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> is that the blood mummy? Um kind of, but what no. Are you say <laughs> I'll, I'll find they come out. You've seen nothing like this person? No. Bloody or otherwise? No. You should go over there, though. I'm All gonna of you stink. grab their hand, like the forearm They're handshake. Like, oh no! Okay. <laughs> Safe travels to you. You too. Oh I, no! I, I apologize for my younger counterpart. Let's go ahead and go on about your day. I intend to. They have. Oh, seen. you are very smelly. All of you. Wow. Obviously, Callum. We're. I don't think he would just travel in broad daylight. I'm assuming he left in like early morning before sun so there was probably nobody out here at the time you never know they may have been out getting a coffee or a newspaper I don't, probably not the way the curfew works but mm -hmm. that's Fair point. that's just a, a general you know you're trying and I respect that I like your uh, gumption would be the word I'd go for but let's uh let's rein it in on the blood mummy talk because that tends to probably freak some people out I could see where you would think that. However, mm -hmm. if someone had seen a mummy with blood, they would remember it that fondly. That is hundred percent. But that's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm. you have with people, not just scream out to the general public. In my head, I pictured one person being like, "I've seen the blood." Mummy. I think, uh, and you know what? You were probably not too far off, but then you kind of scared them coming out of the sewers. Yeah, it's just like scientifically, I want to gather as much data immediately. You know, I, I don't want to talk to each one one-on-one. -on -one. We don't have time for that. that. You, you know what? That's, that is a fair point, and I will take that into the next consideration of uh, how we address the uh, general public. All right. All right. <laughs> Buck's just like, good God. <laughs> Where'd he go next, then, you think? God. Uh, yeah, is I'm there gonna, still a trail? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to look around. Good question. Can you smell his trail like a bloodhound? Only if he's using magic. That wasn't magic earlier, correct? The brick and... That was magic. But you couldn't smell that? I... Yes. I don't know if this would lower the check or anything like that, but Buck would think of to look in the general direction of... Where a like uh, necromancy, necromantic esque deity might be, if there would be one in the area, sort of like he would kind of put those pieces sort of together mm. to maybe help where he would focus it, his attention to. It would shift to a religion test, which someone else could make alongside you. Wait, please, cowboy man. Hmm. <laughs> you used to be a cowboy sheriff. Man. Yeah. And people know you here. Uh, uh, uh. Not, I mean, not the people in this area here. I think you got these three coins from the, the person sweeping. Yeah, that we left back on the table. They may be continuing to pay people as they go along. And if you can ask people, they would show you, as you have a history and 
law enforcement, they might show you, we just want to see the money. I don't feel like if the rest of us approached any shop and asked to see their cash drawer. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little odd. They would allow us, but All you... Right. Yeah, fair to, I mean this in the most utmost respect I possibly can, but you should probably hang back as you look very similar to the gentleman. All Adelaide, right. I want you to write down the cursed money of the blood mummy. Just... Later, please. <laughs> All right, Callum, you're with me. <laughs> and I'm gonna try, I'm Has gonna go anyone to seen the cursed blood <laughs> mummy money? Uh, I would like to see it. Any Show me all of your money. I know there's not shops necessarily here, but any like there tenders? Would anywhere. There would be shops? Mm-hmm. All right. They're very specific shops. All right. Would be. He would go to, I guess, people that would be out in the street more often. Did you look not. for trail yet? I have not. Just in case before you derail and that's, that's fair. plan B. That's okay. It's yeah. not derail. Let's take a I'll take a I'll take a looksy doodles. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and look for a trail. Just in case. And then if anybody wants to throw in a religion test to guide you in the direction of any kind of death chapels, Do it that up, would witch. be another thing. Yeah. So I got twelve for the tracking. Twelve for the tracking? Yeah. Okay. God, I we'll factor really that in. bad. <laughs> so as this is probably your first time in the spires at least in a long time um your knowledge of the various saints nearby is limited in terms of like where would one be but you know what to look for um there are a few saints that would handle death moving on to the other side um the transition of dying The average person would equate them with necromancy, which is the wrong choice. You are not the average person. So you would know that it's a bad idea to go to the temple of a god of death or one of their disciples and start asking around about raising the dead. That's going to get you thrown in prison because they would see that. Even as the night soil men, that's something that they would just tolerate as they're part of the city. There's not much they can do about it. However... If you were to instead find, say, someone who could guide you back from that space, that would be somewhere to start looking. So rather than finding a god of death, you would be instead looking for a very particular saint, known as Saint Minus the the Lamplighter. So to kind of put it into perspective that I can understand, it's yes. like as if you were to go to Hades and being like, hey, you bring back the dead, but He'd Charon be, is the person that yes. would Where Hades that would fairy. be like, I, absolutely I don't, and for asking, you have to stay. Yeah. Yes. And then Car- but Charon would be like, I mean, yes, th- can you're take the boat this way. For, to throw it out there, um, Cathar would be the literal god of death and transitioning from life to death or death to life. Cathar as an entity does not mind necromancy because the necromancy that is occurring with the night soil men is not putting a soul back in a body you are just putting energy into the body and reanimating it gotcha he sees that as that's i don't care what you do my my job ends when the soul leaves that body have at it um the lamp lighter is somebody that would put a soul back in a body so if it's not your time he would come get you and say hey not yet and put you back in your body okay so he'll run into an issue it's pretty rare, but if somebody was to be, say, signed up for the Night Soul Man and die before their time and be reanimated as the Night Soul Man, that soul can't return to that body because they will it would just be rotting and it would die. So there's nowhere for them to go. So St. Minus the Lamplighter is in charge then of finding somewhere else for this thing to go, putting it in a new vessel. Oh, okay. So in a very weird roundabout way, instead of looking for a place of necromancy in terms of a church... You'd be looking for saints of that. However, your role is good enough to know there is a ghoul-calling coven. There is a place here where the ghoul-callers all congregate. Not necessarily a church, but it is in the spires. Okay. It's where they keep them uh, because they manage mausoleums, tombs, and crypts. So if you need somebody buried or burned properly, you go to them. They handle it. And if you need somebody, a body disposed of discreetly, depending on who you talk to, they would also handle it. Okay. This is excellent. T, your knowledge is bountiful. I've been around the block a couple times. I'm sure you have. I wonder if I have. (laughs) 
We sure as hell made your name known on this block. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Blood to my me money, anyone? <laughs> Blood to my me money, anyone? Um, then with that, I think we can go head over towards, like, the goo collar where they are. Because if they have anything, I guarantee if we paid them a little bit of something, their mouths are going to flow like that river. Good. Any other any objections? Nope. nope. We're going to deal with some probably some weird freaking people, so... You're probably all over that. <laughs> you I, could probably ride that fence. Every person we've met here has been weird. Fair enough. I think I'm the only normal one here. Well, Adelaide's kind of. All right. I, I'd just like you to know, too, Buck, that that's typical Callum, even when we were kids. He's pretty outspoken and a little odd. I wonder, before we go to the coven, if... Um, I know we don't really know what that is on the coins, but it may be useful to have that. I mean, if you want to make the two-hour trek back down in the sewers or where we were, by all means, but that's two hours back that way, and that's another four hours of lost ground. Go I mean, there we can, back. It, it's pretty close to our guild hole. We can grab it next time we're over in that direction. I know, but speaking to them, it might open... They may speak to us about things that maybe they don't to regular customers or questioners. You know what's a really good influence? And I'll just pull out my... <laughs> she usually gets people to talk pretty quick. I don't think they'll talk the way you would like. Oh, trust me. They will. Well, I have no idea who we're about to meet, but the way you two are riled up, I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> As you should be. The sprawling streets of the Spires District encircle an ornate building that lives up to the name of its location. Tall, dark stone spires pierce the clouds above the cobbled streets. As the Signature Six stare up at the monolithic structure devoted to mourning, a peculiar being dressed in the garb of a physician looks their way through the socketed dark circles of their mask. A gently burning censer in one hand and an ominous green coin in the other. That's where we're gonna stop you today, baby! If you enjoyed the third episode of Riftkin, please consider leaving a like on the video to show your support. If you'd like to see more of Riftkin, and follow along as we continue our new adventure, why not subscribe to the channel? If you'd like to help us out in other ways, you can follow the links in this video's description box to our Patreon. From there, you can join the discussions in our Discord server, Check out the post-show, still rolling, catch the new pre-shows, now airing on Wednesdays, and see extended versions of each episode a week early. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about this session of Riftkin, and what you think lies in wait in the House of Mercy. Thank you so much for watching, we'll catch you next week as Devin takes a turn in the Riftkeeper's seat and unleashes nature's wrath.